between recent Winter Olympic Games, there has been an ever-increasing amount of male and female skating athletes winning and losing by a margin of error that was unheard of when skating was first introduced in the modern Winter Games of 1924. Increasingly, the exact ratio is tenths, hundredths, or even thousandths of a point. Literally, the difference between a medal of various color, being on the podium, or even within the rankings can be by a judge's interpretation of a performance, or if the said skater landed a jump or executed a spin even minutely different than the previous competitor. Due to the level of competition on an international scale and the ever-increasing skill of overall skating athletes, the pressure to perform even more elaborate, complex, or even dangerous routines has led to criticism of the loss of the quote-unquote elegance from performances and a somewhat emphasis on jumps, spins, and turns. Judges have also commented about the lack of artistic expression within some arcs. In not just Olympic competition, but in regional and international competitions as well. As a result of this, there have been calls for and implementations for routines to include jumps, as is now unfortunately standard practice, but re-strengthening aspects of performance and arcs during a routine on the ice. With the concept of winning and losing now so close, the judgment can also be put under an extraordinary amount of criticism if incidents were to occur, and such has happened. A routine is judged purely by the own judge's experience, where there may be standards of routines or acts. Judging the said acts are purely susceptible to the own judge's personal impression, and because of this, there might even be possible bias to or against an athlete. The skating judgment, much like the community, within itself can have extraordinary levels of seniority, and even if there is a found case of bias, there isn't likely going to be much change coming to or from the various countries that have had been implicated or could be implicated in bias toward the scoring or preferential treatment of some skaters over others. It's also now known that skaters can also suffer from a certain type of injury from repeated jumping from and onto the surface of the ice. This said condition is called palatalfemoral pain syndrome and palatinear tendinitis, called in the sport as jumper's knee. For younger skaters whose bodies are still developing, they can also have a condition called iliac crest apophysitis. This occurs when young skaters who still have open spots at the plates of the hips overexert their oblique muscles trying to produce more torque and spins to complete the rotations during a jump. Oftentimes, skaters can perform their act when they might not be at their full strength or health due to an injury. And this can also be a factor which can be put into the point ratio when winning or losing a medal during a said competition. It has also been said that skating is reaching its limit as to what male and female skaters can do for their routines. Based on the human anatomy, with the maximum amount of rotations and torque that can be performed during a jump is basically the limit, such as a quadruple jump, twists, or turns of any kind. With the increasing level of competition, four rotations might not necessarily be enough anymore, and now the idea is theoretically to consider five full rotations during a said jump. But this is not technically possible. Within the early 21st century, the most complex stunt to have ever been technically rightfully performed is the quadruple jump, or four full spins in midair with landing perfectly then being able to continue skating. The next step would logically be a fifth full rotation in midair, which has not been done and would require the jumper to actually jump higher than normal and stay in the air longer as well after the fourth rotation to perform a fifth full twirl then stick the landing. Research shows that the average jump between 0.65 and 0.70 seconds in the air for the fifth full rotation 
they would need an extra time anywhere from 0.72 to 0.75 seconds. This is not physically possible to do with the current human body. A fourth rotation and perhaps half a twist might be possible, but not a fifth full rotation. Even a fourth is extraordinarily dangerous to perform. What's not actually told outside the skating community is that there is a huge risk to skaters who don't land properly after the fourth twist and can cause serious injury to the body. With possible limits as to what a skater can do physically during an act, it puts pressure onto the scoring system even more and the win and loss ratio can be so minute that it's even laughable or depressing for an athlete to be notified that they lost in a competition or was put out of rankings because of something so incomprehensibly minor. What lies ahead for figure skating, or even skating in general, in terms of competitions? With how things are, rather than see what can be done about it now, things might only change when the barrier is reached. And once that point, that incident, that limit is to occur, what can be done then?